Uh, hello everyone, my name is Andreas Schneider. Um, I'm a free and open source software developer working at Red Hat. Um, and I work mainly on Samba, but I also have some spare time projects. I'm working on SSH library and some testing tools. You should know them. If not, then look them up and also do some hacking on Android stuff. But we talk about Samba today. So what is this talk about? I will give answers to the following questions. Why took it so long to get um, Samba AD in Fedora? So we look at the history, um, we look at what's still missing and how you can get your hands dirty. So RHEL currently only packages the Samba file server. And Fedora also packaged Samba FS only for a very long time. So what, what is the reason for this, or, or what was the reason for this? So enterprise distributions are required to ship with MIT Kerberos. And this is a special requirement if you want to do businesses with, micros, uh, with, uh, with governments, especially uh, with the US government. They have a policy that only MIT Kerberos can be used. So enterprise distributions like uh, Red Hat or SUSE, they are required to use MIT Cam or to ship with MIT Kerberos, and everything in the, this distribution needs to be integrated um, with that Kerberos version. So distributions can't mix Heimdall and MIT Kerberos <coughs> because the on-disk format, for example, differs, and also there are symbol clashes if you load both libraries into, into one application. So, Samba ID with MIT Kerberos would allow enterprise distributions to ship it. So, to fix that, we needed to port Samba ID to MIT Kerberos, and that was a requirement to get it at least into Fedora. So, we needed to port it. So, let's look. Let's take a look at the uh, uh, history. So it started in 2013 and was four years of work. And in 2013, we, we thought about how do we get started. So if we port Samba AD to MIT Kerberos, the question was how do we run our tests? Samba is test driven, we have a really huge test suite, so the question was how do we start with that? How we do we get? How do we integrate an external process, the MIT KDC, into our Samba test suite? So in February 2013, I've started to look into Socket Trapper. Socket Trapper already existed in in Samba and was written by Yelma, um, and it couldn't be used with MIT Kerberos. I will explain. Uh, what this more or less is in, in a minute. So we needed to bring socket wrap, and we had also different wrappers on a new level to be able to do all this testing. So the c -rep project was born in 2013. So c -rep is a set of tools to create a fully isolated network and system environment to test client and server components with an static account information, um, host name resolution, resolution, and privilege separation. And this is done by several libraries. One of them is Socket Wrapper, which can be preloaded into any executable. And with that, you can create a network, set up servers, and, and start uh, that they can interact. You can think of CREP like it is the matrix for applications. So I gave already some talks also here at FOSTEM, so you can uh, go back in the archive and you will, uh, can find out what it is. So CREP uh, in the meantime powers the complete Samba uh, testing environment and allows us to do integration tests in, with complex uh, Active Directory in environments on a single box on a developer machine without needing any privileges. And it's very easy to use. 
So, for example, here's a test run uh, of Samba with MIT Kerberos. As you can see, we have a pretty big test suite, uh, pretty big test suite. So, the self test has 2,030 test suites, and in, in the meantime, it's much more. And, well, it takes more than three hours to run. So, in Samba, as I said before, we are test driven. So, how do we get there? So, also in uh, February 2014, we started to run Zamba, or we started to run Zamba with CREP. So, one year later, we, so we started development in 2013. One year later, we were able to use it in in, in Zamba. So, it was there was one year of development to bring them to the next level, and then we started to use them. And it, when we integrated them, it, it still took a few months till we found and fixed all the bugs uh, which were still in there. Okay, that was testing. Now let's look, let's look at some and MIT Kerberos. So at the same time in February 2014, <coughs> uh, Günther Deschner and I worked on the possibility to start the KDC, the MIT KDC, and use it. Um, so we created a Samba MIT module to be able to access the Samba database uh, for, uh, with MIT Kerberos. For that, um, especially Günther created a shim layer to convert between Samba and Kerberos structures called SDB. So it is a simple abstraction of Samba KDC routines and provides a conversion between either Heimdall HDB and uh, MIT KDB, um, which are the KDC database plugins to extend the KDC functionality. Um, so we created an MIT KDP Samba module um, and we had it working in May 2014 and we were able to access the Samba DB from the DC. So we were able to start MIT Kerberos uh, KDC and uh, we were able to start finding and fixing bugs. But this was all manually driven, driven during that time. Um, we integrated that and, uh, well, we started to work on changes, um, especially in the Chansac GSS API module to work with MIT Kerberos. We needed to start to port all the Kerberos code in Zamba, which was only <coughs> working with Heimdall. We added much more regression tests, um, for example, for the KPAS with the protocol. So not only writing tests only for MIT Kerberos, but we extended the tests and run them also first against Heimdall and then MIT Kerberos or vice versa to extend the whole test suite. And then, uh, well, we started to discover bugs in MIT Kerberos and reported them upstream, then we needed to wait till fixes are available. So that stalled us often for some time. Um, in August then, we discovered a new problem. So, so the service discovery in Samba, uh, especially in the tests, were not working. Uh, the MIT uh, Kerberos library, libcap5, uh, normally looks up the KDC via uh, SRV so server uh, DNS records, and that didn't work. Well, because there is no, in this environment, there is no DNS server available, or uh, Samba, provides, um, Samba AD provides one, but we couldn't access that because of limitations. And then we wrote and extended the CREP project with a new wrapper called Resolve Wrapper, and that was a way to fake a DNS server and, and um, <coughs> tell the uh, uh, Kerberos library how to uh, actually discover the KDC. Um, so in April 2015, um, the MIT Kerberos patch set grew up to 140 patches already, and we started to push them upstream to uh, reduce our daily rebase fun we had because uh, people did not look at our branch and things were breaking more, um, often on a daily basis and we needed to rebase every day to keep up with the development. 
And during that time, we still had um, 69 test tubes failing. So we thought that we would be done soon. Um, so in August, we started to implement DC provisioning in uh, Zemba tool itself, so that a user can set it up. Um, the, in our tests, we do it differently. Um, we also noticed that we need to implement the kadmin D service uh, completely on ourselves because MIT didn't have support for uh, access control lists. So we needed to implement ourselves that we can ha uh, that we can use um, access control lists, access control lists from um, from Samba AD. Um, then I ported, for example, the backup key service to GNU TLS, and that was the next thing. Um, when you always, when you port something, for example, here to GNU TLS, you you recognize well there is there are features missing in GNU TLS. Uh, I'm not able to use it right away, so I talk. I normally go to the main developer, talk with him, and, and start implementing the missing pieces. <coughs> So then um, from around February to April 2016, we added much more tests in the time to MIT Kerberos. But uh, MIT Kerberos then uh, missed important hooks for testing. Um, we needed pre-send and post-receive functions uh, in the KDC to, to, to actually do them uh, testing based on uh, Kerberos packets, sending and receiving them. Um, so the first step was again, we need to implement them and MIT Kerberos need to wait till they are upstream, package them uh, so that uh, we could use them for development. Um, yeah, and in April um, the development got completely to a halt because of the bad luck bug we had in Samba. Maybe you heard of that infamous bug. So we didn't do anything in this regard till um, around August. And in August, we recognized that um, credential passing in libsmb doesn't work as it should be. And it was working fine with Heimdall, and we didn't really understand why, because this was really totally broken. So we needed to re rewrite it uh, to pass down the realms, especially through WinBind, um, to have support for trusts. So that took quite some time. And um, then in the end of 2016, MIT Kerberos 1.15 was released. And we thought, yeah, now we have a release with where um, the Samba uh, AD stuff is working. And we can base on that. But then we found out, well, this version has a major problem. Uh, in the KDB API, they removed the uh, the function which allowed memory management for KDB modules, so we were leaking memory. And uh, yeah, then we needed to uh, work together with the MIT Kerberos developers to find a way to bring that, that API in a, so that we do not break stuff for, for a lot of uh, people who implement KDB modules. So, January to March 2017, the last tests, there was only one test failing, when this was about um, external trusts. And uh, we discovered one issue in the MIT KDB module, so we, that was our fault. Uh, we needed to get that right. And the second issue was a bug in Chansec redirecting requests to the correct DC. It took a while to find that out, that we always talk to the wrong KDC. Yeah, but we were able to fix that. That test was passing. And then in April 2007, finally the code hit uh, master. We did not do a daily rebasis. We had everything upstream, and it was working quite well. So last September, um, Samba 4.7 got released, and it was the first release with uh, MIT Kerberos support for some Active Directory. Let's look at Samba AD in uh, Fedora. So in November 2007, 
<coughs> Finally, um, the, uh, Fedora 27 got released uh, with Samba AD. So it took a while to package it correctly. So thanks to all the testers. Um, first, so the first thing was we need to package it, uh, try that the installation is working, that uh, system uh, uh, that we have system D integration, um, the provisioning is working correctly. We found bugs around a Samba tool with. Uh, MIT Kerberos and also uh, people are using um, either the integrated DNS server or, or bind. So we needed to get things right, in, especially in Fedora and together with the bind version in there. And I was lucky that I had several people who were willing to test this in uh, the better releases of Fedora 27 and reporting bugs and uh, we could clean up the package. <coughs> so what works at the moment? So all the important stuff um, is working quite well. So single DC works very good. Forest trusts are, are working, uh, currently not with free IPA. There is one bug we need to fix. And also external trusts. Um, the problem is that this stuff is currently not really tested very well in Zamba self-test and we need to get there. So um, I hope that we can implement more tests related to trusts um, in the near future. The, the groundwork already uh, was, um, the code for that uh, went to master lately so we've we fixed uh, uh, several issues uh, in this area. So now the question is how to install it. You can just uh, call DNF install somebody see then normally all the components required to run it are automatically uh, resolved and installed. Then um, you can in install it using Zamba tool domain provision. It um, will be an interactive session where it will ask you the questions um, for the realm, for example, and then you can call systemd to start the service. Um, Samba tool is not, I would say it's not very user friendly. If there are errors, you get normally uh, Python tracebacks and we need to work on them to, um, to give useful information to people who don't understand Python tracebacks, but give useful information to understand what the problem is. Um, and if you are hitting something like that, when you are trying it out, please uh, open a bug. Um, we need to know about that and uh, describe what you did and how to re reproduce it so we can fix that. Or if you know Python, please provide patches. So Samba provides a module to uh, use uh, bind DNS, which is called um, bind DL set. I would uh, suggest to avoid that module because to, it took a while to get that correctly in, uh, in Fedora working and there are still some issues that module is really a horrible hack and it directly works on the database. It needs hard links that you do that and uh, it means Bind has full write access to the whole database of, of Samba. Um, we need to look into the Bind DNLDA project uh, which is used by FreeAPA and uh, they just talk to LDAP and maybe we can extend that or change the code that it also works with Samba. That would be the correct way uh, to do that and there is already a project maybe we can work together with them to implement that correctly. Uh, Samba provides an internal DNS server. Uh, if possible, use that and do not use bind if you care about security. Um, unless you know what you are doing. So look into that stuff. Um, administration. So currently the Samba DC can be administrated using the Windows uh, graphical tools. You can connect uh, remotely to the Samba DC and use them to administrate it. 
The other thing is uh, Samba tool on the command line. We saw several cont contributions uh, lately to uh, improve the usability, but we are not not there yet. Not there yet. But uh, for example, if you are working on, uh, if you know Python, and if you uh, use Samba tool, we are happy to uh, see patches uh, in this area to improve the usability of Samba tool. Um, yeah, and uh, Alexander lately hacked a little bit and wrote a Samba module for cockpit. It's very basic at the moment, it's just a proof of comms that it works very well, so you just click here on run initial Samba AD setup, it will, will call Samba tool domain provision, will ask you for the thing it needs, like uh, the realm, password and stuff like that, and then it will magically in the background uh, provision this thing, start it, and then you will have an overview about the configuration, um, what network ports it is using, and some details about uh, Samba AD. So if uh, someone is interested to help with that, I think uh, Alexander is open for patches. Okay, what's missing? Um, yeah, as I already said, usability improvements for the Samba tool. Um, then PK init support should work, but it's, uh, we don't have tests for it, and we don't have any documentation how to set it up, so um, I don't have time for that right now, so if someone else needs that and wants to look into that and can write a tutorial how to set it up, I'm, I'm happy. Based on that, I can implement the test then. Um, audit locking uh, got added, I think, to 4.7? 4.8. 4 4.8 audit locking. Um, we, we just tried to build and then Python 3 broke there yes. because of the old. So um, this was added, f it works well with Heimdall. I've started to implement that for MIT Kerberos, but um, there are some issues because. <laughs> Heimdall is integrated, or Heimdall is running in the Samba process, so it's the same process, and logging works just fine, but as MIT Kerberos, uh, um, the KDC is running as a different process, we have two processes where do the audit logging and uh, the interaction doesn't work. But uh, yeah, that will be probably in 4.9 then. Um, Kerberos impersonation support is not working as for you to self and as for you to proxy. Um, Kerberos fast support is uh, missing, but uh, we need changes in MIT Kerberos for that. Um, Samba AD with MIT Kerberos does not work as a read only domain controller. Um, that would mean that. To, that we can implement that or that we can use that, it would mean that MIT Kerberos needs to provide a libkdc. And uh, this means we need to specify an API um, and then MIT Kerberos needs to probably restructure a lot of code to make that possible. Um, smart card support is missing. Um, Again, it should probably work with the um, Yeah, Alexander said that it should work with the default MIT stuff, but we don't did any test in that area. So we can't say 100, or we cannot be 100% sure. And we normally say at some other bug by bug, feature by feature, and the other motto we have is uh, untested code is broken code. So it's untested, it's probably broken. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Um, we have still five minutes left for questions, if you have any. Questions? Why did Samba went with the uh, handle covers in initially? <laughs> so the question was why, why Samba went with Heimdall Kerberos uh, initially. So when, uh, when the development started for Samba Active Directory, um, 
Samba developers evaluated what Kerberos implementations out there are available and <coughs> which has the most active community. During that time, M Heimdall Kerberos was very active and the developer was willing to implement features which were missing and required by, by Samba. So when a feature was missing, we could describe what we need and he started to implement that stuff. During that time, MIT Kerberos was pretty dead. But that changed in the meantime, so now Heimlich Herberos is pretty dead. I think the reason is probably the main developer moved to Apple and disappeared. Yeah, they, the community around Heimdall's recovery. Yeah, so there is a, still a community around Heimdall and they do releases, but there is no real active development going on. Mm, and there MIT. Are new releases, by there the are new, yes, there are new releases, but feature-wise, or and MIT Kerberos changed in the meantime. I, I guess also one reason is free IPA and Red Hat investing a lot into it. So it's currently it's very active. They work on new stuff, and it's easy to do, get features in there. So I, when I implemented new new stuff, I just did a bit pull request, and then I get. Refuse normally in within two work days, and it, so, yeah. So, so that choice is not related to export restriction of, of, of cryptography technology from the United States. So the question was if it was is uh, the restriction of export control at the time. At the time I don't think no. so. No. Same story as with Elder at the time. Yeah. The open adop guys were unwilling to accept any changes from us, so we did our own adop server. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Volker just uh, commented that it was the same with LDAP during that time. Open LDAP was not willing to do anything the Samba team needed to actually use Open LDAP as the back end, so the Samba team decided to implement LDAP on their own. That's how we ended up with LDB based on TDB. And we have much better collaboration tools nowadays, so it's much, the situation is improving on that front. Like, Git was not existing at all. <laughs> yeah, and in, in the meantime, uh, as Alexander said, uh, we have much better tools for uh, collaboration uh, with these projects, whatever we need. So Git is now available, it's easy to contribute. Question. Uh, you mentioned that uh, PK init and smart card uh, were not uh, tested or uh, completely uh, supported. Uh, is that just because of MRT or was it not working already with uh, Heimdall? So the question was uh, if PK init and smart card support is not, what's the reason that I say it's not supported? The thing is, um, it, it should work because it works very well with MIT Kerberos. But the question is, does it work with Samba? Yes, it should be, but as long as I don't have tests which prove it, I cannot state that Samba is working well, PKInit is working, or smart card support. So if, if you say, I want to try it, and you know how to set it up, probably I, I would say, yes, it will work. I'm happy to, to get uh, a how-to, how to do it. Then I will happily integrate it also in our testing infrastructure. But I didn't have the time to, to dive into that, set it up, and test everything. Thank you. Uh, you said that at the beginning that MIT Kerberos was required by uh, enterprise and government in the US. Could you elaborate on that? Um, so I should go into details for why MIT Kerberos is, is uh, required by governments. Um, I don't know why, but. As far as I know, it's the U.S. government since a long time has a rule to only allow um, MIT Kerberos in their environment, no other MIT Kerberos uh, implementation. So this was why all the enterprise distributions, because they wanted to uh, do business with the U.S. government, they went with MIT Kerberos. Okay, but it's limited with uh, U.S. government. Uh, Yes, I think in the meantime, it's all, it, there are more governments who, based on that, probably went with MIT Kerberos. But it's also practical uh, distribution-wise. It's impractical to maintain two uh, Kerberos implementations because they 
do differ on the ABI level. Uh, whatever you link with does not guarantee that if you choose alternative implementation at runtime, it will even work. It will most likely crash. They do work and be compatible over network <laughs> connections. That's the whole idea of the protocol. But having them at the same time, Fedora has Heimdall packages in mm. Fedora 27. That's the first release where it came out. And we have um, been in an interesting situation with the, um, um, these kind of packages because we, we simply cannot, at distribution level, test uh, and build those packages against different uh, implementations. So I to hope there will be yeah. some change with the sort of uh, modularity game that Fedora tried to run where you could have different modules with different build parameters and there you might try to get it but uh, on the uh, generic distro it's a very tough problem to solve yeah so um, as Alec did I to, to repeat his last <laughs> <minute>. yeah to, <laughs> to, to repeat so it's uh, you cannot to, you need to decide on one library because a lot of stuff is depending on it. You cannot mix two li MIT Kerberos libraries on the same distributions because of either symbol clashes. If you install two and or both are loaded into a process, which symbol do I pick as the, the on-disk caches differ? So if one application writes something on disk, and the other one wants to use it and uses dif a different Heimdall or a dif different MIT Kerberos, uh, Kerberos implementation, then it cannot read the, the, the on-disk format. It's, they are the same on a protocol level, but not on the implementation details on the system. Okay, Thank you. time is over. <laughs>